वेलकम कृष्ण महाराज प्लीज एक्सेप्ट माय हम्बल ऑब्सेंसेस ऑल ग्लोरीज टू शीला प्रभुपाद थैंक यू सो मच महाराज फॉर गिविंग योर वैल्यूबल एसोसिएशन दिस मॉर्निंग एंड एनलाइटनिंग अस ऑन द टॉपिक ऑफ श्रीमद् भागवतम टुडेस वर्स इज 7th कैंटो सेकंड चैप्टर 37 37 वर्स महाराज ओवर टू यू महाराज योर वर्सेस विल बी ऑन द स्क्रीन Can we do a full screen for the verse? Uh Maharaj is the screen not visible? It's visible but it's just part oh, of the translation. It. Okay. Let me see you going by side full screen what is standard um, standard mm -hmm. okay got it okay. Yeah all right now it's happening Okay is it better okay Now we got it Yeah Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Priyam siyama uvacha Ahomisham vyayasa dikanam Vipasyatam loka vidim vimohaha Yatragata statra katam manusham Swayam sadharmam apiso chadya partam. Translation. Yamaraj is speaking and he says, Alas, how amazing it is. These persons who are older than me have full experience that hundreds and thousands of living entities have taken birth and died. Thus they should understand that they are also apt to die, yet still they are bewildered. The conditioned soul comes from an unknown place and returns after death to that same unknown place. There is no exception mm -hmm. to this rule, which is conducted by material nature, Knowing this, why do they uselessly lament? The Prabhupada's purport. The Lord says in Bhagavad Gita 2.28, Avyat, Avyaktini Bhutani, Vyakta Madhyani Bharatam, Avyakta Nidana Deva, Tratrake Paridevana. All creative beings are unmanifested in their beginning. Oops, can't see it now. Drop it down. Okay, right there. All created beings are unmanifest, unmanifest in their beginning, manifested in their interim state, and unmanifest again when they are annihilated. So what need is there for lamentation? All created beings are unmanifest in their beginning, manifest in their interim state and unmanifested again when they are annihilated. So what need is there for lamentation? Accepting that there are two classes of philosophers, one believing in the existing of the soul and the other not believing in its existence, there is no cause for lamentation in either case. Non-believers in the existence of the soul are called atheists by the followers of Vedic wisdom. Yet even if for argument's sake we accept the atheistic theory, there is still no cause for lamentation. Apart from the separate existence of the soul, the material elements remain unmanifested before creation. From this subtle state of unmanifestation comes manifestation. Just as from ether, air is generated, from air, fire is generated, from fire, water is generated, and from water, earth becomes manifest. From the earth, many varieties of manifestations take place. For example, a big skyscraper is manifested from the earth. 
when it is dismantled, the manifestation becomes again unmanifested and remains as atoms in the ultimate stage. The law of conservation of energy remains, but in the course of time, things are manifested and unmanifested. That is the difference. Then what cause is there for lamentation, either manifestation or unmanifestation? Somehow or other, even in the unmanifest stage, things are not lost. Both at the beginning and at the end, all elements remain unmanifested, and this does not make any real material difference. I hope everyone is following along. It's, it's quite philosophical, so try to pay attention very carefully. Otherwise, you'll miss the point. <laughs> if we accept the Vedic conclusion, Ram, Ram, Ram. if we accept the Vedic conclusion as stated in the Bhagavad Gita, antavantam mimam deham, that these material bodies are perishable in due course of time, nitya sokta sarinam but that the soul is eternal, then we must remember always that the body is like a dress. Therefore, why lament the changing of a dress? The material body has no factual existence in relationship to the eternal soul. It is something like a dream. In a dream, we may think of flying in the sky or sitting on the chariot as a king. And when we wake up, we can see that we are neither in the sky nor seated on the chariot. Vedic wisdom encourages self-realization on the basis of the non-existence of the material body. Therefore, in either case, whether one believes in the existence of the soul or does not believe in the existence of the soul, there is no cause for lamentation for the loss of the body. In the Mahabharata, it is said, Adarshanar ihayatam puna chandarsanam gata. This statement could support the theory of the atheistic science is that the child in the womb, the mother has no life, but is simply a lump of matter. To follow this theory, if the lump of matter is aborted by a surgical operation, no life is killed. The body of the child is like a tumor, and if a tumor is operated upon and thrown away, no sin is involved. The same argument could be put forward in regard to the king and his queens. The body of the king was manifested from an unmanifested source, and again it became unmanifested from manifestation. Since the manifestation exists only in the middle between the two points of manifestation, why should one cry for the body manifested in the internal? Chaksun militam yena tasmai shri bhagavad namaha. Namao Vishnu padaya krishna prasnaya bhutale shri bhakti bhakti vedanta swamini kinamine. Namaste saraswati deve gaurabhani pacharine nirvise satsunyavari pasyatya deze kinamine. Vanshakalpatru bhutale bhachapitanam pavane vyo. Vaishnava Vyam and the whole of the Bhagavad Gita. Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu Nindi, Yananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhara, Sri Vasavi Gaur, Bhakta Vindam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So if we followed carefully what was explained in the third point, we find that whether you believe in the soul or you don't believe in the soul, it doesn't really have much of a difference in understanding whether the body is alive or not. Because ultimately, in both cases, the body didn't exist before life manifested in this form. And the body will not exist after a certain time. So there's no loss because in the beginning there was no body and at the end there's no body. So in the middle, there is some body. But we don't accept the theory of the atheist 
that there is uh, the body is actually life and the end of the body is actually death. We accept the fact that the soul is eternal and exists somewhere, whether within one particular manifested state or another manifested state. The soul will exist eternally. Um, and the body is just a temporary impl implication or imposition upon the soul at a certain period of material time. And then after some time, that body is lost. So this is inevitable. This is the laws of nature. No one can change them. So what is relevant for those in devotional service? What is the main purpose here? Point here is that the body will end. There's no question about that. That's just the way things work in this world. The soul is eternal. And we are not the body, as it says, for the soul there is neither birth nor death, though having once been, does he ever cease to be? Is he eternal, undying, primeval, immovable? He's not slain when the body is slain. Well, the soul exists eternally, as Krishna exists eternally, so the soul is eternal. And by analysis, one can see that there is something that is perceiving the activities of the external environment, and that is you, the person. Your, your hands, your legs, your arms, everything in relationship to the whole forms of the material energy that present themselves in your front are combinations of material energies, material elements that come together at a certain time and are disillusioned in due course of time. As it says, all matter goes through six stages. Beginning, matter means in terms of forms. Beginning, and then growth, development, producing byproducts, and then gradually dwindling, and then dying. Well, that's inevitable. So what is our position? Well, our position is not is to simply accept the material body and use it to, to somehow away, awaken our spiritual awareness. Therefore, to have a human body is a great boon in, in, the, in, the, in the course of accepting bodies because there are 8,400,000 species of life and 400,000 are human. And out of those 400,000, very few are actually intelligent. And for those who are actually have good intelligence, then the best use of that intelligence is to perceive my, myself as being different than the body that I inhabit. Same with my relatives, friends, and everything else. Everything else is different than the forms it presents. Here we see that Yamaraj is is kind of lamenting the fact that these people are, are crying over a departed relative, knowing, he says, they are more experienced than we are. We are simply a child. He took the form of a seven-year-old child. And you'll see as this section goes on, he speaks very clear philosophy, the difference between the body and the soul which is the foundation by which Krishna consciousness awakens. If one thinks that a body or acts simply on the bodily platform, one cannot understand higher knowledge, which means Krishna consciousness. So one has to, that's why Krishna in the very first chapter of the second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, he spends 20 verses from the 11th verse, 211, to about 230 in the same chapter, and describing the difference between the body and the soul, presenting that same argument from different angles of vision, 
just to dispel all forms of um, What are you doing? Sorry, Maharaj. Please continue. Yeah, leave the verse on. <laughs> Dispelling all forms of illusion based on the, the conception that I am this body. <laughs> so what what is important for a devotee? Devotee at least theoretically knows and I'm not this body. That much we can attest to. I know I'm not this body. So then what 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 is the what is the activities of one who has this preliminary knowledge it is to awaken the awareness of the soul's relationship with its source, the Supreme Lord. And the time period that the body exists for that particular soul devotee is the uh, time to be used for self-realization. Otherwise, without using the time for self-realization, simply pandering to the needs and the desires of the body, then the material energy will give us, again, another body in the next life, begin all over again, starting off where we left off in the previous life to try to understand our relationship with the Supreme Lord. So for a devotee, there is no death because death means the end of something and therefore the soul never doesn't die. So there is no death for the soul. Therefore, there is no death for a devotee. So a devotee understands that, hey, if I'm eternal, where am I going to go after the end of this body? Just like in our life, many times we plan ahead about future activities, future uh, future places we want to visit, or we're always making plans for the future, and we very carefully think about how to plan it in such a way that we can maximize the benefit. So those who are actually intelligent and understand the purpose of life will not simply waste time trying to fix the problems in this material life because they're not fixable. <laughs> when you fix one problem, another problem comes. And this is, this is enunciated and confirmed by Sri Prahlad Maharaj. You'll come to that verse in the future chapters of the seventh canto where he says that the solutions, material solutions to material problems are more problematic than the actual problems. They can they create a greater, greater problem, do not solve the present problem either. They compound the problem. Mm -hmm. So for devotee, devotee doesn't worry. Happiness comes, distress comes. Now, the devotee is always thinking, how can I use my time to awaken my relationship with the Lord? And after hearing from the scriptures and from the acharyas who emphasize the importance about hearing the glories of the Lord, especially his activities in his abodes in the spiritual world, Vrindavan Dham, Madhura, work than all of the higher dom and of course any of the incarnations of the Lord, the devotee becomes fixed in on Krishna, develops an attraction which turns to in turns to an attachment for Krishna, and one's activities become focused on awakening the soul. And then when the end of the body comes, which if, which will come for everyone, then the devotee moves on to the next position, ultimately to, in the perfectional stage of existence. One can again attain perfection by going back to our original home in the spiritual world to associate with Krishna in eternal loving transcendental service, which is full of knowledge and unlimited happiness. 
and not in this material world, which is simply a struggle just to exist from day to day, solving one problem and then confronting another problem. And so a devotee does the minimum. The devotee does not neglect the body. Just like if you want to go someplace in your vehicle, you make sure your vehicle is running nicely. You have to make sure the tires are in good shape, change the oil, put, put fuel in it, and the motor should be working nicely. So there's some attention for the body. But, but, but attention is just like the attention of a driver to the car. He never thinks he's the car, but he knows he can use the car to get to his desired destinations. The devotee does that, takes care of the body, but knows that I am not this body. And therefore, let me use my time, not simply polishing the car all day or trying to um, you know, get a better running car. The uh, devotee simply wants to hear and chant the glories of the Lord and engage in devotional service in the association with others, which gives inspiration to one's activities and devotionals. In the association of others, we become inspired in our goal to become Krishna consciousness, and we also become happy in that association. So here, this... this uh, her work by Srila Prabhupada is very interesting because he says in any case, there's no cause for lamentation of the body because the body will be lost whether you believe in the soul or whether you not, don't believe in the soul. So the inevitability of the end of the body is, is the destination for those who have a material body. So that will happen. It's sometimes people, you know, when some relative dies or some friend dies, we become overwhelmed with grief and we lament the loss of our loved one. But then that's something that is normal, but it's not something to dwell on. It's something that is a passing experience. And then we move on knowing that I will also be in that situation in, in the future. So let me get ready to move towards my goal mm. in the spiritual world. Okay, so um, in other words, use time wisely and, uh, and don't worry about the body. It will take its natural course. Keep it running, but Keep, keep the soul, you, focused on the ultimate goal, which is the perfection of life back home, back to Godhead, in association with the Lord and loving devotional service. Otherwise, it says here, like the, the soul comes from an unknown destination, and when the body ends, the soul will go to another, another unknown destination. But that's for those who take, who take most of their energy, time, and efforts to maintain the body. For a devotee, they can actually choose where they're going to go by focusing on Krishna and focusing on eternal life in, the, in devotional service. But that requires attention, effort, time, energy, and, and, and good intelligence. And we can do that with the help of Krishna in the form of the super soul, the spiritual master's guidance, and the association of other devotees. Okay, we can stop here. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much for the beautiful class. Very grateful to you, Maharaj. Um, I'm sorry, I have to on my video. I forgot to on. Uh, thank you, Maharaj, for the beautiful, beautiful class. Very grateful to you. My camera is not working. <laughs> it's coming something wrong. Okay. So, Maharaj, my question is, you said that you, you should not worry about uh, other things. 
um you should be concentrating on krishna consciousness but uh, sometimes uh, we we will be more uh, busy in uh, concentrating other things and um, not concentrating on krishna consciousness not all the times only sometimes uh, how do we manage that kind of situation maharaj uh well i said you have to take care of the body and if you have responsibilities in this world Well, we should be detached from the results of those activities. In other words, we just do it because it's required. But we put our attention, time, effort, and uh, all of our emotion in devotional service. It's and the material activities for a devotee who have responsibilities. It's just like routine. It's like it's routine to eat. It's routine to, you know, to to take care of the body by keeping it clean, by evacuation. All of these things are routine. We have to do it. So all we should see all material activities in the same way. They're just routine. That's all. We just go through the motions, get it done, but. we are keeping our concentration attention on krishna and devotional service like i said take care of the car but don't spend all day polishing the car thank you maharaj thank you so much for explaining in detail very grateful to you we have some raise hands maharaj would you like to take some questions Maharaj, we have um, Indulekha Mataji. Please go ahead with your question. Hi, Krishna Maharaj. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, thank you so much for this wonderful class, Maharaj. I had a very basic question with regard to you know when the soul when we are lamenting for another person who has left. Many times we are lamenting because. of the relationship that we had with that person so we are lamenting because we are worried about what things what would happen to us once they are gone uh, so uh, that it, it is because that person has got a pivotal role in our life that's why we are lamenting so it is not for it's less for the loss of that personality and more because we can't manage many things without that person so how do we understand it from that perspective maharaj how can we uh, how can uh, we calm ourselves obviously you make some adjustment and you carry on this happens to everybody someone loses a friend a relative someone close they go through the stage of feeling the loss and also feeling their own uh You know difficulties that will occur occur without that person, but they adjust. <laughs> they just adjust. That's all. <laughs> and best way to adjust is to become more and more dependent on Krishna. Krishna will take care of you if you surrender to him. The more you surrender to him, the more he takes care of you. And for those who are fully surrenders, he takes care of you one hundred percent. Even without you even asking, he's always there for those who are fully surrendered to him. There's no need to worry. If you don't have that faith, then you can't surrender. You have to develop that faith, and that comes by hearing from the acharyas, hearing from the scriptures, hearing from Krishna. Krishna is everything, and for the devotee. He he provides everything the devotee needs on all levels, not just basic needs. But we have to surrender to Krishna. That means we have to depend on Krishna, and we also have to serve the Lord. Also, we can't depend on Him if we're not serving Him. Uh, what you're saying is it's a very commonplace. It happens to everyone, and life goes on. So adjustment is made, and the 
the person picks up and learns to live without that person or without that situation. That's all. You're going to have to learn to live without your body at one point. So, you know, then everything is gone, at least the material. So um, Krishna is showing us through the material energy that we have to depend on him in all cases. Krishna Mata, Krishna Pita, Krishna Dana Pran. It's not simply a saying, it's a reality for those who take shelter of Krishna. Mm -hmm. And you'll see, how did this Krishna consciousness movement spread? If you study the history, at least even do a partial study, you'll see that everything happened by what we would call miracles, one miracle after another. Why? Because Srila Prabhupada had full faith and dependence on Krishna. And those who joined him also had full faith uh, in Prabhupada. And because that faith was there, they were able to do the most amazing things to spread Krishna consciousness. So if we, if we have faith and act on that faith, we will see miracles happening. Krishna is always there. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Oh, that was a wonderful answer. Very, very nice. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you, Maharaj. Shiva Kumar Prabhu, please go ahead. Oh, Balabhadra Kripa Prabhu, please go ahead, Prabhu. Thank, thank you, Mataji. Thank you, Indulekha Mataji, for asking that beautiful question. Everybody of us, yeah, it happens in our life when we lose our loved one or that situation is difficult to control. And and uh, who who is that doing more service than you, Indulekha Mataji? So thank you for being with us. Thank you, Maharaj. Beautiful answer. Krishna gives everything to us. But then he steals our heart, Maharaj. What to do? <laughs> he gives everything on one side and other side. He's stealing our heart. <laughs> Maharaj, we have our uh, beautiful Sukhakara Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, Dhanva Pranam Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Maharaj, always on some good occasion, you are there to bless all of us. Vishnu Banchaka is there. Please bless all of us, Maharaj, that we have to go back home in this very life. We don't want to come back to the miserable material world. I got one question, Maharaj. There are two things which is really stopping us to go back home, back to God. One is the, we are possessiveness. We think we are this body, we are here, it's mine, 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 that one. The second one, where the selfish mentality, holding things, this for this, this. So to get rid of that, we know from the scriptures that we are not the body. Nothing, we don't anything, we don't own anything, we are not the doer. But in the back of the mind, that is also going on, the chartered accountant and this. So how to forget what we have acquired? You go to sleep at night and you dream and you forget all about this waking reality and you're in you're in another reality and you identify with that reality and it becomes the reality of the the, the time in the time period you're in it and so all of the things that on the waking level are all are not even perceivable anymore so in one sense they're gone so that's that's our subtle existence so our spiritual existence is Ultimately, both uh, all states of consciousness are simply a dream state. That's all. Whether it's waking or dreaming, we're dreaming. We're a man. We're dreaming. I'm. I got this. I got that. I'm. I can enjoy like this. But who's enjoying in this material world? You see, oh, statistics even show that people who have achieved the so-called material goals of life are the people who have the most. Uh, what we say, uh, mental depressions, anxiety, depression, frustration, uh, schizophrenia, so many problems, suicide. Now, it's not by people who are, what we say, poor. Mm -hmm. They also have their problems, too. But, you know, this world has shown us, all we have to do is be a little bit awake to show us that 
people are, are getting everything they want and still they're suffering. <laughs> That's the way this world is. You can't stay here and you can't enjoy here. So why waste time playing with toys? <laughs> <laughs> that's what they are toys created by either your mind or somebody else's mind better to focus on the what is our real goal and find happiness in that and therefore we have to hear and chant the glories of the Lord hear read about yes, yeah these are these are the things that give the soul that awakens the soul and and when the soul is awakened, its qualities of happiness and knowledge become awakened also. And then we feel happy. We 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 we, we bask in transcendental knowledge, and we act, and and we actually can connect with Krishna through everything we do. So, but we're wasting time still still playing with toys. You know? <laughs> My like so the man. The Kartik Mela one week was in Vrindavan. After coming back, missing so much, I don't know how to be always in Vrindavan. Uh, what is the what is the last statement you made? I was in Vrindavan for one week in Kartik. Just came back and I'm really missing. I feel that I'm so unfortunate not able to live in Vrindavan forever. But there it was so blissful. We don't know how the seven days went off. Yeah, just so, don't come back. That's all. Stay there. <laughs> I had the same experience. I was there twice during this Kartik month for short periods. Each time I left, I felt like I'm like I must be crazy for leaving. <laughs> and in Vrindavan, everything is enhanced. Everything is multiplied. Please bless uh, all of us, Maharaj, that we make, wherever we are, to make it like a Vrindavan. Please bless us, Maharaj. You have got so much of mercy and you are so powerful. You are such a great disciple of Srila Prabhupada. Please bless us, Maharaj. We uh, beg uh, you. If you say I, I should bless you, then I'll bless you too. Uh, what do they call it? Lord Chaitanya wanted to give blessings to Sarva Bhumma Bhattacharya, or no, Advaita Chari is it? Krishna Matir Astu. <laughs> Jai Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Very beautiful. We are trying to find happiness without Krishna in this material world and get sorrows. True, Maharaj. Yeah. Richest person on the planets, they are struggling with this uh, depression and whatnot. True, Maharaj. Very true. And Sukhara Krishna Prabhu, you should maintain your uh, accounting skills. Maybe Krishna needs an accountant in Goloka to count how many ports he has stolen. So keep your accounting skills. <laughs> He's still stealing, stealing butter pots. So. <laughs> Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Shiva Kumar Prabhuji, Hare Krishna, Dhanavat Pranam. Hare Krishna Prabhu, Dhanavat Pranam Prabhu. Thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj, the Lord Prams Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, one question from today's class, Maharaj. Um, uh, I'm just looking at these two pastimes, Maharaj. Uh, for uh, Bharat Maharaj, he had to leave the body to continue devotional service. Whereas in case of Ajamila, he continues, he is given a second chance to continue the devotional service in the same body, Maharaj. So I just wanted to understand is there any insight or lesson uh, uh, that Krishna uh, has for us? in terms of continuing the devotional service in the same body versus uh, have to leave the body and can only continue the devotional service in a, in a new next body. Well, that depends on your consciousness. Krishna will deal with your consciousness. Hmm. No, he dealt, he dealt with Ajamil in a certain way. Because Ajamil chanted Namabhas. And then uh, he dealt with... Uh, uh, Bart Maharaj in another way because Bart Maharaj was a great devotee. He had reached the stage of um, of um, Baba, but he fell down from the stage of Baba, and so his previous devotional service was quite high. So, so but because he 
he deviated or he neglected his spiritual activities, became enamored by a, a deer. He had to take one birth as a deer, but he, but because of his high consciousness, he, even that deer body, he was aware that he was in the deer body because of what he did in the previous life. And therefore he didn't associate with uh, deers, he associated with the sages. And then he left that dear body and then he took one more birth as Jetabharat. So every situation warrants the, the mercy of the Lord as it comes according to the consciousness and activities of the person involved. So Krishna will deal with you accordingly. He may extend your life mm. in devotion service or he may uh, situate you in a, in a different situation where you can pick up in a better situation. It's up to Krishna. I can't say anything how anything will happen in a, a logical way. It happens according to Krishna's arrangement based on that devotee's surrender to Krishna. Okay. 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 Thank you so much, Maharaj. Yeah. Thank you, Prabhu. That's a beautiful question. Thank you, Maharaj. Such a beautiful answer. We have to depend on Krishna. And uh, and what to speak about us, we do 16 rounds and we want to go back. And uh, here is the example of Bharat Maharaj, who is a state of bhava. And just for the mm -hmm. compassion and at attachment, he, he falls down. So thank you, Maharaj. What a beautiful answer, Maharaj. Thank you. We just depend on Krishna. So every day we go to Mandir, we pray to Krishna and uh, just life goes on. We pray to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, our Aditi Mataji has a hand raised. Hare Krishna Mataji, welcome back from Dham. I know you are in Dham. Please unmute yourself, Mataji. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. And uh, dear Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Guru Maharaj ki jai. What to say about Vrindavan Dham? I didn't want to come back, honestly. <laughs> we don't want to come back once we are in Vrindavan. Like, <laughs> Prabhu said that separation I'm still experiencing my body has come here but my heart and so it's in Vrindavan but Maharaj I just want to uh, you know uh, that you know I have seen you in uh, Vrindavan dancing you know in Pune oh my Krishna where do you get this energy from Maharaj I mean yeah. you were singing and the whole <laughs> Proud, the aura over there was like dancing with you. I wish we have a little bit of mercy the way you have energy in you at this age also. You know, please uh, let me know where you get this energy from and let me know, Maharaj, how to deal with this separation. Like coming back from Rindavan, you know, I stayed six months uh, in India. I visited right. all the, and um, I was very fortunate to do service also. But um, that separation, I'm not able to deal with it, Maharaj. My heart and soul is still in Vrindavan. I'm sure every temple is Vrindavan for us. That's what we read and that's what we learn. But um, it's it's been very difficult for me, this separation. So And let me know where you get this energy from, Maharaj. It was so, so nice to see you dancing there in Pune and we see temple. Just let me know how do you get that energy from. Um, <laughs> when uh, I get the energy from the same place that everybody gets the energy from, <laughs> the source of all energy, Krishna. <laughs> yes. Um. Yeah, but how do we deal with that separation? My heart is still yeah. unreal. Oh well. Mahap Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he had the same experience. And he was always wanting to go to Vrindavan. And he went in Vrindavan with him, in his internal consciousness. He explored the depths of his love for Krishna in the mood of Radharani by accepting uh, internal moods of seeing Krishna in Vrindavan. But then when he became, when he was brought back by his devotees, because they always were worried about what was happening to him, they couldn't understand from the external point of view. He always chastised them and said, 
you know, I was with Krishna in Vrindavan, now he brought me here and he starts crying. You know? yeah. He's actually, he starts crying out of sadness, Now now he's no longer with Krishna in Vrindavan. So that is a feature of uh, bhakti, the separation from the Lord, the separation from the Lord's holy dham. Yes. But what can you do? So that that should inspire us more. Yeah. The, the service that we look at, we look at uh, our life, and we think, what is the use? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, you're correct. What's the use of this life, right? So in anticipation, I look forward, I will be going back again. So, but uh, very difficult to deal with this uh, separation. And uh, yeah, we do see, <clears throat> I, I experienced that, uh, you know, uh, the, I witnessed watching you. Oh, it was a huge crowd, Maharaj, I couldn't get to you. You know, <laughs> the more I tried, you know, I was pushed behind. So, but then uh, we, we get inspired uh, seeing exalted and uttam adhikaris like you maharaj and we get to learn so many things thank you so much for your darshan maharaj again dandwat pranam on your lotus feet maharaj Hare krishna just keep krishna in, in your heart and your mind and your whole <coughs> yes 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 thank you maharaj aditi mataji and shukakar krishna prabhuji are increasing our greediness to go to vrindavan now let's go, <laughs> let's go. Don't plan. We all should go together. Go. All yeah, should go yeah, together. Next time. Yeah. Bhakti yeah. Baladas bro, after initiation, her face is shiny. After initiation. Prabhu is like... smiles. <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, Mara. What a beautiful answer. Certainly, as we are part and parcel of Krishna, who is uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself, so as he was uh, crying for Vrindavan, we are part and parcel. We have a <laughs> Lamentation, we have that uh, crying, and certainly, Maharaj, what is beautiful than Vipralamba Bhav Aditi Mataji? Now you can burn in that uh, mood of separation from Vrindavan, and that's the best mood. I become so, happy, I become happy by crying. I got the Raman Rate. If you have heard about the Raman Rate, yeah. I got that for everyone as a prasad where. Uh, Krishna and Balram would uh, do their pastimes, you know. All I could get is the m dust and the Raman Rith from Vrindavan, you know, just to I also keep got, Yes. I also got Raman Rith. And also, <laughs> over them, that, like, just like laddu, if you eat like yes. it, it's like so soft. Yeah. Wow. Thank, Thank you. Thank and you. I, I guess, okay, Makar, yeah. you your spirit remains last so. Yeah, I only have about five more minutes. Um, oh, okay, Maharaj. We will go to our Krishna Shetra Prabhuji. He he Prabhuji, go ahead, please. So maybe this is the last thank question. You. Thank, thank you, Maharaj Dandavar Pranam. Very beautiful class. And I came halfway, but I uh, appreciate the question that was raised uh, by, by the Mataji who asked this question. I just have a comment for today. Srila Prabhupada... Uh, made a beautiful comment when uh, um, Abhimanyu died. So Arjuna, of course, he was lamenting like uh, like an ordinary person would do. But Srila Prabhupada mentioned that he did increase his devotional service after. He started fighting more vigorously. That's all I wanted to say, Maharaj. Yeah. For reverse, for devotee reverses or opportunities for advancement. I see whatever happens is an opportunity to take greater shelter of Krishna, to become more attached to devotional activities. Um, a non devotee lives according to his plans, and when his plans don't go, he always feels unhappy, dissatisfied, uh, starts to complain or make new plans. The devotee stays fixed in Krishna consciousness, and whatever Krishna allows to happen, they can see it as opportunities for greater surrender in devotional service. That is a fact that which is happening in the lives of the devotees practically every day. One should not be discouraged if one's plans and activities go in a different direction because 
We only have one plan to get out of this material world and we'll go back home, back to Godhead. Keeping that focus in mind, we can deal with whatever happens either so-called good or so-called bad because we only have one goal Krishna Vyadya Satvika Budhir Ekeha Kuranandana Bahu Sakya Yanatas Cha Budeo Vavisani Nam Those who are resolute in purpose and their aim in one O beloved child of the Kurus those whose intelligences are irresolute, they are many branched. Devotees are devotees are simple. They want Krishna. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, but I do have to go because uh, there's someone here waiting for me there. So if there's one quick last question we can deal with that. <laughs> Actually, Krishnai Mataji has a small question. She's asking, during Damodar month, Maharaj, when we go with the deep dan around the deity of uh, Sri Krishna, so why is that number four, two, and three, and then seven? She's asking. That's that's just the way RT is offered. That's part of the Pancharachriki system of work. Not that's, done, that's done on regular artists too, not just in Dhammadai. Yeah. Yes, Maharaj. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you for beautiful class, Maharaj. Thank you for staying with the question answer session, Maharaj. Even we, we all know you are so busy, Maharaj, but we all try to get more and more association and time of your Maharaj. So mm -hmm. bless us and uh, and Maharaj, just stay with us all the time, please. So, dear devotees. Uh, let us pay our obeisances to Maharaj and all the assembled devotees on the line and all the Tribhuvan. Pancha Kalapataru Vaishya Pancha Kalapataru Vaishya Pancha Kalapataru Vaishya Pancha Kalapataru Vaishya Pancha Kalapataru Hi, Gauranga! 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 Gauranga!